Uh, I'm here to speak about a personal story, a story of my family. Uh, this picture is for my father. He's a farmer. He's 65 years old. He lived abroad for th over 30 years, and then he returned home to Palestine, to Gaza, after wanting to be at home again after 30 years. These pictures are of my brothers. Uh, the one with the red background is Ibrahim. He's a college freshman and he's 17 year old. Uh, the one to my left uh, is Kassab. He's 28 year old uh, architect. They're both two young, vibrant people, full of life dreams and aspirations. On January the 16th of this year, during the Israeli invasion of Gaza, uh, my father and my two brothers were spending the night in our farm. It's in the outskirts of Khan Yunis. They spent Thursday night there and Friday they woke up in the morning, they did some of the farm chores, they had their breakfast, their coffee, and then they were planning to head back home, but they were waiting for the daily lull or ceasefire to start. On that day, the ceasefire was taking place from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. It was announced in the radios and newspapers, both in Israel and Palestine. Around 12.45 afternoon, they got in the car and started driving. Around midnight, my father received a call from Al Jazeera channel. Another call, they asked him, you are on air, tell us what happened, where are you? He told them, we're driving home, you were shot. One of my sons died and the other is still bleeding and I'm still bleeding. We need an ambulance right away. Send an ambulance now, save my son's life. If you call me in another hour, maybe I won't be here to respond to your call. And they promised to help, they tried to help, but in vain. After he finished the call, around 12.30, after midnight, now Saturday morning, he noticed that Ibrahim was quiet. He wasn't asking him to call 101 again. He wasn't saying he was in pain. He thought he might have been sleeping. He called on him, Rahim, Rahim, son. Can you hear me, son? Rahim didn't respond. He checked his forehead. It was still warm. He checked his pulse, his breath. There was nothing. Ibrahim was dead.